today we will be discussing regarding eclampsia so convulsion or coma unrelated to other cerebral conditions during pregnancy or postpartum in patients with signs and symptoms of preeclampsia is called eclampsia once more convulsions or coma unrelated to other cerebral conditions during pregnancy or postpartum in patients with signs and symptoms of preeclampsia is called eclampsia unless other causes are proven all pregnant women with convulsions should be considered to have eclampsia so the management is generally left to lateral position in a coat with railings ensure the airway is open oropharyngeal suction and when needed oxygen administration during the convulsive episodes and continuous measurement of oxygen saturation establish an iv line and ringer lactate is the ideal fluid catheterize the bladder and maintain intake output chart mouth gag during the convulsion so the management first we will see regarding the management of eclampsia investigations as in severe preeclampsia cerebral imaging is not necessary in majority of cases then indications for imaging study so focal neurological defect prolonged coma recurrent convulsions not responding to magnesium onset before 20 week of gestation more than 48 hours after delivery the principles in the management of eclampsia first we have to control of convulsion that is anti convulsant therapy control of severe hypertension through anti hypertensives then delivery of the fetus counseling regarding the disease condition complications and progression need for intense monitoring max self if complication occurs then pitch chart regimens of magnesium sulfate first we will see the loading dose that is 4 g iv and 5 g im magnesium sulfate have to give in 20 ml 20 percentage that is 4 g iv over 5 to 15 minutes in 20 ml 50 percentage that is 5 g im in each buttocks if convulsions persist 2 g iv over 3 to 5 minutes maintenance dose 10 ml that is 50 percentage 5 g im every 4 hours on alternative buttocks then kfog regimes of magnesium sulfate loading dose 4 g iv and 4 g im 20 ml 20 percentage that is 4 g iv over 10 minutes 2 g deep im as 50 percentage solution in each buttocks if convulsions recur after loading dose additional 2 g of 20 percentage solutions iv is given over 3 to 5 minutes loading dose mg so4 is given regardless of urine output and renal function test maintenance dose that is 4 g of 50 percentage max self in 100 ml normal saline run at a rate of 1 g per hour monitoring toxicity therapeutic range is 4 to 8 milli equivalent per liter very narrow range between therapeutic and toxic levels patella reflex respiratory rate and urinary output management of toxicity of mgso4 once the patella reflex is absent the blood level of magnesium is about 10 milli equivalent per liter stop the mgso4 can restart mgso4 when reflex returns respiratory arrest occurs when the level is 12 milli equivalent per liter then stop mgso4 iv calcium gluconate 10 ml of 10 percentage solution over 10 minutes then oxygen by mask still hypoxic endotracheal intubation should perform decreased urine output less than 20 ml per hour then stop mgso4 immediate termination by delivery or cs absolute contraindications myasthenia gravis recent myocardial infarctions pulmonary edema ccf then renal failures then management of severe hypertension that is nifedipine regimen treatment that is nif nifedipine 10 mg then 10 minute for 1 hour we have to follow up have to do nifedipine 20 mg means 15 minute for 1 hour follow up nifedipine 20 mg means every 30 minutes 1 hour we have to see iv labetrol 40 mg means hourly for 4 hours we have to follow up how to do then labetrol regimen that is labetrol 20 mg means 1 hour each 10 minutes we have to do the follow up labetrol 40 mg means 1 hour 15 minutes labetrol 80 mg means 1 hour 30 minutes iv hydralazine hourly for 4 hours 
immediate termination is advisable after controlling the seizure and stabilizing the patient. No contraindication to vaginal delivery. Indications of lower segment cesarean section. Unfavorable cervix, failed induction, severe fetal growth restriction, pulmonary edema, renal failure, placental abruption, obstetrical indications, malpresentation, CPD, intrapartum fetal distress. Then some of the factors that are associated with the bad prognosis are long interval between fits and delivery, late referral, coma, very high blood pressure, oliguria and severe proteinuria, abnormal LFT, help syndrome, gestational age less than 28 weeks. Mortality. With adequate treatment, the mortality should be less than 2 percentage. The perinatal mortality is high up to 30 percentage due to prematurity, hypoxia and the effect of drugs used. So we will see one example. 38 year old gravida 2 para 1 live baby 1 with positive UPT. On examination BMI was 32, BP 150 by 100 mm of HG. What is your diagnosis? So it may be a chronic hypertension. So hypertension antedating the pregnancy, hypertension before 20 weeks not attributable to GTD, hypertension first diagnosed after 20 weeks and persisting 12 weeks postpartum, then chronic hypertension with the superimposed preeclampsia. That is the appearance of new onset proteinuria, severe exacerbations in hypertension, development of symptoms, elevated liver enzymes, platelet below 1 lakh. So, in chronic hypertension, primary or essential hypertension in 90% cases, then secondary causes are renal diseases, collagen diseases, pheochromocytoma, Cushing syndrome, Cone disease, coactation of iota and renal artery stenosis. Complications are superimposed preeclampsia, abruption, cerebral hemorrhage, congestive cardiac failure and renal damage. So, the management mainly preconceptional evaluation, blood pressure should be well controlled prior to pregnancy. Changing of antihypertensives like ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers and diuretics evaluated for end organ damage, investigation to find out the cause of hypertension, antihypertensives and aspirins, aneuploidy screening 11 week to 13 week for 6 days, then diabetic screens and fetal echo. Closely monitoring for development for develop, uh, superimposed preeclampsia. Then we have to evaluate for growth and well-being. Uh, ultrasound for fetal growth AFI UA Doppler at 28 weeks, 32 weeks and 36 weeks. Uh, well controlled hypertension means appointments uh, 2 to 4 weeks only. Then poorly controlled hypertension means weekly we have to uh, give the appointment. Timing of birth in chronic hypertension. Uncomplicated, controlled, not requiring medications that is 38 to 39. Isolated, uncomplicated, controlled or medica on medications. Then difficult to control means up to 37. Chronic hypertension with superimposed preeclampsia. Decision to deliver is similar to other preeclamptic women based on gestational age and presence of severe features. So next we will see regarding the HELP syndrome. It is a variant of severe preeclampsia. So, help syndrome we will be dealing in next video. Hope you understood the eclampsia. Thank you for watching. Share to your friends.